Hey, Jake. What's up, Scott? What are we looking at today? We're going to be looking at two American artworks from different stylistic eras. Sounds good. Let's get started. Okay. The first piece that we're looking at is called A Study Table by William Michael Harnett, who was an Irish-American painter from the 1800s. What's so special about him? Well, he was one of the most successful American still-life painters, and he's known for his use of the trump Loy style. Trump what? Trump Loy. It's a French phrase that means trick the eye. This style is a special type of still life painting that makes the painting look so real that they look three dimensional. Yeah, they do look like the real thing. It's like the objects are right in front of you. I know, right? If you look at the painting, you'll notice the incredible attention to detail. Each element of the painting is carefully painted so that even if you focus your eyes on one aspect of the painting, it will still seem lifelike. Yeah, like the way that the pages of the open book bend and the way that the objects overlap each other. I also like how the book looks aged and dusty and how the metal can and the instruments provides a visual contrast from the books. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the lighting in this painting is very important as well. Despite the juxtaposition of the objects on the table, Harnett does a good job of using the light and the shadow to focus the subjects away from the dark black background. This puts much more significance to the subjects that are portrayed. That's a good point. So what sets Harnett apart from all the other still life painters? Well, still life paintings usually depict ordinary and everyday objects such as a fruit or a table. Harnett, however, likes to paint the things that are significant to him. In this case, he fills this study table with objects of literature and music, which are both very important to him. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. But I think the most important aspect that Harnett uses in paintings such as this one is that he creates an abstraction through realism. The physical nature of this painting is very real or lifelike. However, the idea behind it, the fact that it is not real and it is just a painting, makes one question what truly is real and if something abstract can be real. It's just a matter of one's perspective. Yeah, I agree with you. Alright, let's move on to the next painting. What can you tell me about this one? This painting is called Both Members of the Club by George Wesley Matthews, and it was made in 1909. He was an American realist painter who tried to capture the urban life of New York City. In this painting, which was the fourth out of four boxing paintings he did, he decided to create the rare seeing of a white and black boxer going head to head in the ring. Yeah, it seems unlikely that members from these two races would box one another, especially considering it was the early 1900s. So how does boxing reflect life in New York City? Well, Bellows found that corruption had made public boxing illegal. Private sport clubs managed to circumvent the law, but they also bared the fighters who were deemed socially unacceptable from joining, such as African Americans. I see, so people would go watch illegal boxing matches for fun? Yep. Boxing was beginning to become popular, and it served a good source of entertainment, even if it was illegal. <laughs> I guess that made it more desirable. So, does this fight between the black man and white man represent the conflict that surrounded the two races in society at the time? Yeah, I think Matthews tried to portray the constant opposition between the whites and blacks. Not only that, this piece symbolizes absolute masculinity and power. I mean, what else can be more masculine than two grown men beating each other up? <laughs> True. You know what stands out for me the most? That one audience member in the middle of the painting who has the biggest grin on his face. It's kind of creepy, actually, that he's getting so much joy from watching them. <laughs> I guess because it was not any ordinary sport, but a sport that was banned and illegal. So the emotions must have been raging in each and every different direction. There must have been that thrill of doing something illegal and forbidden that you just don't get from legal sports. Yeah, he probably had an adrenaline rush. What do you think about the physical nature of the fighters? The violence of the ring is transformed into an elegant dance of the two, where the lean, muscular bodies and their graceful limbs contrast sharply with the gullish, leering faces of the spectators. In this case, it's not the blood that's Gory, but those who revel in it. That's an interesting point. I think once again the light emphasizes that. Not only does the light shine on the fighters, it also illuminates the expressions of the audience because as you said, they are the ones that are supporting it. Exactly. His topics remain very current too. Violence, issues of race, political elections, the role of women, 
and large-scale urban enterprises all relevant even today. <sighs> so we're done, right? Wait, what? No. What are you talking about? We still have like 20 more minutes of information to talk about. Okay, so it all started at the beginning.